Welcome to Gospel Greetings, practical encouragement for living out your faith in the marketplace. This week, we continue our series called Signs of the Times. Last week, we did Passion, Not Apathy, from Romans 13. Understand the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Dr. Jeremiah described a great falling away in the church, a church filled with apathy. Yet Jesus may come tonight at the stroke of midnight, and then it'll be too late. So let's share all the blessings we have with passion and an urgency of his impending coming. This week, we continue with persecution number one from 1 Peter 4, 12 to 14. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. I don't know how far we are from the kind of persecution that involves torture and death as Christians endured in the New Testament and now endure in other countries, but there are signs that resistance to our Christian faith is growing. Since the na nature of persecution and our response to it is a huge issue, I'll handle it in two parts. Today, I'll consider the first stage of persecution, and then next week, the effects and response to persecution. Dr. Jeremiah describes five stages of religious suppression occurring at our, in our times. The first one, stereotyping. Many Christians are often stere stereotyped as ignorant, uneducated, inhibited, homophobic, and intolerant. Movies and television usually feature a Christian as the antagonist, a holier-than-thou bigot who judges others harshly, or he is portrayed as a hypocrite who doesn't live what he professes to believe. Stage two, marginalizing. Many secularists want Christianity to be, Christianity to be displaced from the center of our lives. The church, if it must be allowed to exist, they want it to be confined to the realm of personal privacy. That is why public prayer must be forbidden. Christian influence and in public policy eliminated and Christian holidays secularized. Christians must be excluded from positions of power and influence. Stage three, threatening. Banning religious expression within academic, institutional, corporate, or public arenas is not enough for many secularists. They're determined to make Christians pay the price, even when privately performing actions that conflict with the progressive agenda. Four, intimidating. In 2013, the ACLU sued a Catholic hospital because it did not offer abortion services to a client experiencing a difficult pregnancy. They said, the issue is not whether those who wish to avail themselves of certain services will be able to, but that those who object to them must be forced to participate. Unbelievable. Stage five, litigating. A growing number of Christians are being taken to court for refusing to compromise their Christian convictions. Many Christians have paid heavily for standing by their convictions. Some lost their life savings. Others were forced out of business or into bankruptcy. And several even received death threats from activists. So let's be on guard for these signs. Let's pray. Dear Father, give us strength to deal with direct and indirect persecution. Let the light of Jesus shine in our hearts for all to see. In Jesus' name, amen.